Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Faisan Ali and as you know, I'm heading a YouTube channel called Research Beast. Uh, we have some interesting videos on that channel um, and recently I started another series on the channel called Re Ask the Editors. Uh, in this series, I ask different editors uh, the things that many researchers or young scholars are out these questions from these editors, but they never had a, an opportunity to ask these questions. So. Um, if you are interested um, in similar videos, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon uh, just so that you can have a notification about similar videos in the future. Today, we have Dr. Mark Rosenbaum from University of South Carolina, who also happens to be co-editor for Journal of Services Marketing. Um, we have had interesting discussion and the interview is coming up right now. Um, hello, everybody. So today I have Dr. Mark from University of South Carolina with us, who is the co-editor co for Journal of Services Marketing. And he was kind enough to accept the invitation to talk to me and to the subscribers of the channel. Uh, Mark, hello and welcome. Hi, thank you. Thank you for inviting me, Research Beast. <laughs> of course, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure. So, uh, Mark, let's uh, dive into the interview. Um, um, I'm going to link uh, to your profile on the video later on so that people can, uh, you know, click on the link and uh, see your profile and stuff. And I'm also going to link to Journal of Services Marketing so it's easier for people to uh, get into the journal. Um, while you are talking about the journal, Mark, um, I would want you to uh, tell us a little bit about any developments or anything that you are thinking about JSM to start, uh, you know, the real well, The journal services marketing, um, an exciting time. We've got three special issues coming out. And I think the special mm -hmm. issues kind of tell you where we're going in the future. So we have one special issue coming out early 2020 on qualitative research and services research or how to use qualitative research and and it's a great compilation of qualitative articles we actually handle the debate of qualitative versus quantitative in the journal services marketing um, some authors have contested that JSM may be biased and Rebecca and I and along with the PhD candidate actually um, analyzed the history of qualitative research in JSM, and we counter it that we're actually one of the um, leading journals that accepts qualitative research. We have another special issue coming out in transformative service research. Um, JSM is dedicated to understanding how services, service providers, and service systems can enhance consumer welfare. And we have a third special issue coming out on aging. And I just think that there's so much room for a theoretical development in aging consumers that we've got consumers now living in their 80s, 90s, even in the 100s. And how do their service needs change? How do they evaluate service quality? How do they form relationships? Almost all of our foundational theories can be reassessed from an older consumer's perspective. So if you look at these topics, qualitative, aging, transformative, I think it gives you a really great insights into where GSM's headed. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mark. I mean, this is very interesting because um, we are countering the same issues in hospitality with uh, the debate between quantitative and qualitative. In fact, I know that Cornell um, Hospitality Quarterly is coming up with something about research methods as a special issue. Uh, and IJCHM, I was one of the co-editors for the special issue that we did on research methods. Uh, so I think it's a very timely a special issue with services marketing. Uh, to think about the debate of qualitative and quantitative. So you did uh, touch on some of the topics in aging and transformative services uh, for the special issue. Um, that leads me to the second question. If you could be a little bit more specific for those people who are planning to submit their papers to JSM, what would be some new research ideas that you would be willing to look at um, you know, uh, as submissions for JSM? So, I encourage researchers to look at relevant topics that are published by the Marketing Science Institute, research priorities, 
Look at the journal service research priority. Mm -hmm. Look at the journal services marketing research priority. Okay. We right. specifically asked for research um, in areas that are underdeveloped. So, for example, we want to know more about consumers, consumers in developing countries and least developed countries. We want to understand clearly robotics and artificial intelligence. We want to understand consumer decision making among groups that have been overlooked in the past. And what Rebecca and I try to do as editors is we try to write editorials that guide researchers. Read our editorials. They're very, I mean, I think they're interesting editorials. And we try to provide advice to researchers on the areas that need further development. Mm -hmm. So I encourage researchers to please engage in relevant research and let the editors know that this paper topic is coming from a research priority that was addressed by MSI, JSR, JSM. It was stimulated by an editorial. I think it's up to authors to let the editors know that their research is original. And I find that many, many scholars do not do this. Mm -hmm. Right, Mark. So I, um, this is a good point that you bring up, and that is to contact the editors and let them know if the paper is original or if the research is original. So um, I used two words, paper and research. And the reason why I did that was because um, many scholars, especially from developing countries or least developed countries, they do not have access to editors like they haven't met them before or stuff like that, right? And I've seen many times are very reluctant to reach out to editors. I mean, in my own experience, um, I have reached out to many editors and I've had very interesting and amazing responses from the editors, right? So do you think it's a good idea for people if they have a good idea or if they think that they have an interesting topic to work on to reach out to the editors and ask them about it? You know, let me answer this from a, from different perspectives. Mm -hmm. When authors submit articles, mm -hmm. I read the cover letter. Mm -hmm. And every journal asks for a cover letter. Mm -hmm. Now, quite often, an author will say the basics. Um, I'm happy to submit this article, or there's a disclaimer that is required that this article has not been submitted elsewhere. Then they say thank you, bye. They don't actually tell me why they're submitting to the journal services marketing. Some do, but some don't. Researchers, again, whether, whether you're from an industrial nation, least developed nation, I don't care where someone's from but I read every letter very carefully. What I'm looking for is a letter that says, this paper addresses a research gap as identified by the Marketing Science Institute research priorities. This identifies a research priority established by JSM or JSR. I want that clear in the cover letter. Because now you're saying, look, this is why I'm sending the article to JSM, because it addresses this void. Now, how you want to communicate with an editor, um, you could do that clearly at conferences. You could do that via an email. You could do it via um, a Facebook page. But there's so much content out there already. And the, the, my first task as a PhD student was to look at the Marketing Science Institute. And I'm, I'm not, I don't work for the Marketing and Science Institute. I feel like I'm a, on a commercial now for MSI. But I encourage everyone in marketing and hospitality and in services to join the MSI blog, to download the research priorities, to find out what is practice, what, what is industry and academia saying is the future of research, at least for the next five years. I mean, clearly we don't have a we don't have a magic ball. We can't predict ten years, but we could predict two to three. And I am tired of authors submitting papers that sound like they're not from the 1990s. So 
For, for instance, JSM is really not interested in another serve qual piece. In fact, we removed serve qual as a keyword. So this is a key indication that after thousands, if not tens of thousands of papers on serve qual, we do not need 10,001. It's not that the research isn't interesting. There's just, where's the sense of newness? Even terms like satisfaction and loyalty, future behavioral intention. These were topics that we studied in the 1980s, 1990s. Now we're moving on to new areas. And I want to make sure that researchers understand the importance of research priority and reading and responding to them. In fact, before I engage in a research project, I actually look at MSI to make sure that this is an MSI topic. Right. So, Mark, uh, again, very interesting um, suggestions. And I really, really agree that most of the papers now that people are submitting are actually, you know, from the 1990s and stuff right. like this. So, which brings me to another question, and that is, uh, many of those studies, like you said, self qual or self perf or even satisfaction, right. which would be, you know, termed as replication studies, like people are focusing more on replication. Right. Uh, what are your thoughts on replication studies or replicative studies? So, um, Rebecca and I wrote an editorial on replication study in the journal services marketing. But what we said is replication is fine as long as you're adding something new to the theory. Let me give you an example. Most of our research substantive in nature. What I mean by substantive is that researchers in hospitality or even services, they may use one sample and they develop an article from one sample site. And the article gets published. Great. But it's substantive in nature and it's very limited in variance to one group. What we want to see in a replication study is we want to see when the theory doesn't hold up. That's an interesting replication study. So if you say, look, I'm testing theory A. Theory A works in setting B. That's not interesting, because why shouldn't it work? Now, what could be interesting as we move to general theories, from substantive to general, we want researchers to add variants to show when a theory needs to be modified. So I want researchers, let's say in South America, to take one of the theories that was maybe a theory that was created in the USA or in Europe and show its limitations. Because then if we add variance to a theoretical framework, we st start to expand our knowledge. What I find is that many researchers in developing or least developed nations they're very scared to be wrong. They're very scared to say, look, this theory doesn't hold up. That's when you're on the right path to knowledge. You see, all of our research is stuck with very lim limited variants. So we have a lot of substantive theories. To some extent, I'll see even say that serve qual is substantive in nature, because whenever it gets replicated in developing countries, it doesn't really hold up. Now, it's not a negative to refute a theory or to find its weak points. It's to say, look, this theory needs to be modified in context. That's how we move to a general theory of marketing. So I see that our discipline is actually weak on general theories, strong and sub substantive. So if a researcher takes basic service theories, customer experience, customer relationship management, serve qual, I mean, we could name zone of tolerance, your basic foundational theories. If you show that they don't work, that's fascinating. So straight verification that shows that theory A works in setting B is an interesting, because why wouldn't it work? But when you find theoretical frameworks that don't work, that's fascinating. And I find that many young researchers get scared because they think that the model has to work. No, it doesn't. 
you're on the path of knowledge when you actually find something that doesn't work. So, uh, Mark, it's very interesting. I mean, I'm going to share with you my personal experience. And that is, I, I go to like developing countries. I've been to Malaysia, China, and some other places. And I completely agree with you. And the thing is that sometimes if the students, their hypotheses do not hold true or, you know, whatever they thought is going to happen didn't happen that way. Um, they are looked at as culprits, you know, be, <laughs> like why is your hypothesis not being supported or stuff like this, right? Which is the point that you are bringing. If it's right, not but instead of, run, instead of running away, that's when you're onto something new. Exactly. So um, I, I think this is a very interesting point and um, I, I completely agree. So, um, all right, Mark, now, um, because you did think about, uh, you did talk about theoretical contribution and theory and all that stuff. Uh, my next question to you is, what is contribution for you as co-editor of JSN? Contribution is simply knowledge. If, if we said, let's, let's not use the word contribution. What are we learning from this article? What knowledge are you bringing? So this is, this is a challenge to all researchers. If I'm going to read your article, what am I going to learn? Will I learn about theory? Will I learn about practice? Will I learn about methods? Will I learn about something that I can do in the future? So maybe a research agenda. What, what am I learning from this article? And I cannot tell you how many articles I read that I wonder, is this boring? What exactly is the contribution in terms of knowledge creation? You see, researchers only do two things. We either create knowledge or we verify knowledge. Theoretical creation, theoretical verification. I want to see articles that teach us something. Now, what's really great about Emerald is that Emerald has different types of articles. Not everything has to be a research paper. There's, I believe, seven different types of papers. There's conceptual papers, there's a literature review, there's a methodological type of paper, there's the traditional research paper. There's different types of papers, but each type of paper has to yield knowledge. What am I learning by reading this article? And from a reviewer's perspective, if people want to have good reviews, make the paper interesting. Because a reviewer is essentially giving up an hour to two hours of his or her time. Now, that person wants to learn something new during this hour process of doing the review. So to answer your question quite succinctly, a contributions knowledge. I have to learn something new. And that something, maybe it's theoretical, Maybe it's a working tip. Maybe it's a research agenda. But it's got to be something. It's got to be knowledge. All right. Thank you, Mark. Um, so my next question is somewhat related to this, and that is um, I've had a lot of trouble uh, writing review papers or meta-analysis papers and justifying it as somewhat contributing to the literature right. because, um, you know, I've, especially when it comes to hospitality and tourism with exception of a few journals most of the journals would not accept you know meta-analysis or review papers and they're mostly desk rejected but then in general marketing uh, you see so many meta-analytical papers or review papers um, what do you think about meta-analysis okay let me take it one step further emerald has different paper classifications we have a classification simply for review articles, which a meta-analysis would fit in. I would encourage you as an author, if you're going to engage in meta-analysis, make sure that your paper type says review. This is very important because it's going to help the editors and the associate editors in the review process find reviewers who are skilled with review papers. 
Otherwise, you may, it may be handled as a research paper, and then somebody will say, well, what's new here? That's the first issue. The second issue is many meta-analysis papers do a great job of summarizing up research. But let's go back to the contribution, the so what. You have got to summarize and then set the stage for the future. So meta-analysis, where have we been? Where are we going? There's two parts. And I think that quite often researchers may see a meta-analysis as simply as a summary report, saying, okay, well, this is great. And they don't, we realize that a lot of time and effort went into meta-analysis. Take us into the future. And I think that's really important is that for the contribution, you've got to, as an author, show us where we've been and where do we go. Where are the gaps? So I would like to see a meta-analysis of, let's say, I'll just do something broad, satisfaction in hospitality settings. My God, there's probably thousands of articles. Where have we been? Where are the gaps? And then set the research agenda to fill in. And again, the research type, that's not a research paper per se, call it a review paper so that the editors know that this is not a research paper. And I don't know how other journals work, but again, okay. I, and I'm, I'm not, this isn't a commercial for Emerald, but I will pitch Emerald here. Mm -hmm. Emerald has different categories of papers. Everything does not have to be a research paper. There's literature reviews, there's conceptual papers, there's different types of papers. So I encourage authors to look at the different types of papers and let the editors know that this is not a research paper, this is a different type of paper. I mean, we'll see it in the abstract, but this way there's many bells and whistles alerting reviewers and editors that this is not a traditional research paper. Got it, thank you, Mark. Uh, so uh, we did talk about a lot of different things in general, but now I'm gonna come back again, uh, specific to general services marketing. Um, and my question to you is since I mean, you go pretty much through all the papers submitted to the journal. In your opinion, uh, based on your experience, what are the top three mistakes that people make in quantitative studies and in qualitative studies? So separately, what, what are these three mistakes that you see often? In quantitative studies, one of the key mistakes is to work with a co-author where you cut and paste. Hmm so that the front end tone of voice does not match the method section. Mm -hmm. In a quantitative paper also, don't forego the importance of the introduction, the mm -hmm. abstract. Mm -hmm. You can have wonderful statistical methods, but if it's boring, if it's boring, no one gets to the statistics. So, Quantitative, per se, is not a key to success. The front end's got to be interesting. Um, I, you know, I don't see that, that many differences between quantitative and qualitative. I see authors making several mistakes. And let me just talk, I would like to just talk about some of the mistakes that authors make. One of the, one of the first mistakes is they don't follow our submission guidelines. So Emerald has a unique abstract. Think about me as an editor. The first thing I see is the title. I then click on view submission. The first, the next, the second step is the abstract comes up. Now Emerald has a 250 word abstract, but it has unique headings. And I read the abstract first and, well, I read it after I read the title. So abstract is second. If that abstract is not in the Emerald form, as an author, you're sending a signal to the editor that I don't really care about your journal. I just wanna push this off my desk. Then I'll read the cover letter. So this is before I even use an associate editor. 
I then read the cover letter. I've mentioned this before. A good cover letter should describe why this paper is being sent to JSM. Why should I take people's time in the review process to send it out? Why is this paper worth 35 pages? Now, if your letter says the traditional disclaimer, this article is not um, submitted anywhere else, thank you very much, goodbye. You've told me nothing as an author as to why you're selecting JSM. Now, then I'll, I'll then skim the paper. And there's, there's so many style mistakes in terms of cutting and pasting that I often wonder what are some authors doing? Because if you're using the review process to get feedback, you're actually wasting a lot of time because we actually trace, we actually flag authors in terms of um, quality. I mean, so if somebody actually, as if an author actually does egregious errors, we could actually put a warning flag in the Manuscript Central warning us of this author's work. We also have trackers coming in from Manuscript Central so that if an author sends numerous papers from one um, address, from one computer, it shows up as a warning signal in Manuscript Central that this, com this computer is involved in many submissions, and we get a warning. So think carefully before you submit. Put respect into your work. Think of yourself as an artist. An artist creates music. I mean, well, a musician creates music. An artist creates a beautiful picture. Scholars create beautiful knowledge with their words. Don't abuse it. Thank you very much, Mark. I was going to ask you and then to give some advice to the young scholars, which you actually did just now with the previous question. <laughs> But generally, since we are coming towards the end of the interview, is sure. there anything else you want to stress on for the young scholars? Or? Um, I, I do want to mention that um, we do have a special issue coming out on the qualitative debate. Mm -hmm. One issue with qualitative research is that it needs to yield propositions. It needs to yield something in terms of knowledge. So one thing I don't want to see, I just don't want to see a qualitative descriptive analysis. I want to, I, I love the idea of new conceptual frameworks. I love the idea of, of new, new frameworks that need empirical research. Just make sure that qualitative studies have propositions that can be empirically tested in the future. I think that will really enhance qualitative research. My only, if I have to summarize this research, be original, be creative, use research priorities. Realize that whether you use qualitative or quantitative doesn't really make a difference. It's the knowledge you're creating. Understand with, the, with Emerald, not everything has to be a research paper. There's seven different types of papers that authors can submit. Follow the guidelines. Take your work seriously. You are an artist, you're a musician. You're creating knowledge. Don't abuse it. Thank you, Mark. I really appreciate your time. And, oh, you're welcome. Uh, you know, the, the, the effort that you've taken to talk to us and I really appreciate all the advice and, you know, even the knowledge that you have just created <laughs> talking about all this stuff. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you.